Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Sorry for my voice, I know it sounds a little rough, uh, but I have some fun things to share with you today. And uh, everybody loves a good unboxing, so let's unbox some markers. And no, these aren't the surprising markers I mentioned in Satchat. That's something different, I think. Uh, these are a brand new set that should be launching today um, over at ahuhu.com and probably on Amazon. The new, um, I think it's, well, I'll have to look in there and see exactly what we, what it's called, but let's open it up and see. So there's actually four boxes, and uh, they are a new, oh, I'm so glad I didn't cut into anything there. Um, they are the new Kala Series Slim Chisel and Fine Alcohol Markers from Ohuhu. So you probably are very familiar with the classic the, uh, which are called the Oahu markers. They are also a fine tip and a chisel tip. And then you have the Honolulu and Honolulu B series. So the Honolulu is brush tip and chisel tip. And the Honolulu B series is um, fine tip and brush tip. And the differences between these markers, um, I don't know about the numbering systems on these, but the numbers on the brush marker and the the classic marker are different. So I'll be curious to see what sort of marker numbering system they're going with these. The Honolulu markers come in an assortment of 363 colors. There's a 320 set and there must be another set that you add onto that. I'm thinking it might be skin tones, but it does have a lot of skin tones in it, so I'm not really sure. Um, I'll update in the video description because I did ask the uh, my rep at Uhuhu about that. And these were sent to me for review in advance of them being released. So just to give you the, give you the heads up there. So 363 colors in the Honolulu, both A and B sets, 320 colors in the Ohuhu Classic, which are the Oahu markers, the chisel and bullet tip. And then we've got this new set, the Kala set, that is a slim chisel and a fine tip marker. So let's take a look at them. So here we've got a swatch card that we can color in, and these are landscape tones. There's 60 markers, and then we've got a little printed swatch there. Um, just looking at the numbers, they are not, um, I can't tell you for sure if they are a match to the other two sets. We've got a protective sheet for putting in between the pages of your sketchbook, or if you're using a coloring book, you can put them in there. Uh, we have a clear colorless blender marker. So there is the chisel tip there. And that's on the wider end of the marker. These look like a marker that I reviewed about a year ago, this body anyway. And there's a sticker on the uh, on the side with the color number and name, and then the uh, marker, a oh, hoo art marker is screened there, and then the caps also have the number and name. Or oh, actually, only the chisel end has the color number and name. The uh, the skinny end does not. So I think these are more designed so you can just use a chisel end for everything. They're very well packaged. And this is a very sturdy box too, and it came inside another box, but I think they could have actually just shipped in that and it would have been fine. So let's take a look here. And these are all the landscape tones. And in the box we have four compartments. Each compartment must have uh, 15 markers in it. If it's a set of 60, that makes sense, right? 15 and 15 is 30, then 30 and 30 is 60. Yep, and this also, the color is print is uh, printed on a sticker that's on the body, and then you've got the name on the cap, and then you've got a plain cap on the bullet end. All right. And these are all fitting in here with the tips down and the chisel up, so uh, you can read everything there. So you can kind of sort these by color families a little bit. There is some styrofoam in here, which I wouldn't keep in here, but just for uh, shipping purposes, I think. You might want to keep it if you're going to, um, you know, I don't know if you're going to ship it somewhere, I guess, but otherwise, I don't think you really need to. Markers are pretty durable anyway. So that's a landscape tone set. Why don't I leave this open so we can see the colors? That'll be pretty. We'll just set that over there on the edge. And then the next one, let's see, we have another set. This one is uh, a smaller box. So let's take a look here. Just cutting shallowly so I cut shallowly so I cut through the tape. Apologies for furnace noises. It is winter in Maine so and I filmed in the basement so there's a lot of noises. Again we have our paperwork and we have a color, another color swatch. It's time for 24 colors of basic tones and then we get the printed swatch and we have another protective plastic piece. Make sure you wipe those plastic pieces between projects. We get our blender, another clear blender. 
That way you don't transfer ink back up through your paper. That's happened to me before on thin paper. And then this one is the Kala Series Basic Tones. I'm just seeing if the other one says, yep, they both say Kala Series on them. So these are brand new. They're not on the website yet. As the, I'm uh, reviewing, I'm actually filming this. It just These just came in the mail yesterday. And I'm reviewing these, or I'm unboxing them, I should say, on December 8th. And I believe they're they're going to come out on the 12th. I'm not sure how much they're going to sell for, but I'm hoping my rep will contact me back and tell me. So we've got a variety of colors here from like a bright red. Let's see, do we have our bright primary and secondary colors? We've got a bright red, we've got a bright yellow, got a bright blue, then we have an orange, we've got a bright, bright green, we have a bright purple, and then it looks like we get a couple earth tones. Well, a few earth tones, we got a few grays, we got a couple extra greens. So uh, that's a pretty decent little set of, set of 24, I'd say. The next set we're going to look at is illustration tones. So this might be more mo more colors that are really popular right now that are more trendy. That's what I'm assuming. I'm not sure. I probably would, well, I don't know if I will with these or not, but if they were my only markers, I would probably divide them up by color family and combine them together. So again, we have the booklet that goes through the different types of markers and all about Ohuhu and what to do if you have any problems. We've got our printed swatch and we've got our swatch to color in. And then I'll know what I'm gonna be doing tonight when I watch TV, I'll be coloring in swatches. Let's put those out of the way there. Hopefully the camera's focusing. We've got another colorless blender. So it's supposed to be 150 colors and if I do my math, 60 and 60 is 120. And then 120 plus uh, 48, wait a minute. There must be doubles. There must be doubles because if this is a set of 100, if there's 150 colors in a line, then yeah, there's got to be some doubles, right? I was thinking before that it wasn't going to add up to the right amount, but then I'm like, wait a minute, no, it's gonna, it's gonna be too many colors. So there must be some doubles. Hopefully they're really useful ones. And on this one, which is our illustration tones. Oh, look at the artwork on the front of these. The artwork on there is really cute, isn't it? It looks like a girl sketching on a plane. That's really cute. Um, and then, so here we actually have more skin tones. Um, we have kind of those um, muted primaries, like the corals and the kind of like pear color greens and the teals, uh, the lavenders. It's hard to get, there's actually one, two, three, four, five lavenders in this set alone. And it's kind of hard to get lavenders when you're looking in alcohol markers. I think the pinks and the purples are kind of tough to be stable because you color them down and they shift a little bit from wet to dry. So I think uh, I think marker companies are a little hesitant to put too much out in the purple range. We have one more box. I've actually opened this box already because I wasn't sure what was, what was in here when it came in the mail. And again, we have our colorless blender right here in the styrofoam. And then we've got a skin tone set of markers and we've got the same sort of stuff. We've got a swatch card to color in and we've got a printed card and then we've got another one of these protective sheets. So let's set that aside and let's take a look at the skin tone assortment. We'll say, I'll pull these all out and uh, so you can really look at the colors in a minute. You can at least see the color caps anyway. And these are all, let's see, you've got a lot of earth tones, uh, yellows, um, some muted reds, so that's really nice. So I'm wondering, I bet there's some doubles between the skin tones and some of these other colors. That would make sense because um, there are a few skin tones in here and I think you'd want to, yeah, like E294, that's right there. That's one I could pick up right off the bat. Um, let's see, E342, is that in there? I don't know, let's put these all together and have a look though. See if I can get them all on screen pretty well. So right now they're kind of a jumble, which um, if you've ever gotten the big sets of Ohuhu, they all kind of come jumbled up. Uh, so I guess you would want to decide whether you wanted to break them up. Um, the nice thing about this, though, is if you're not sure about this style of marker, because it is a new style, then you could buy the like, skin tone set or the basic tone set, try them out, see what you think, and then as your budget allows, you could pick up the other two sets. And I don't know what the total uh, number of markers that they might plan on releasing. In the brochure, they have, they say 150. So that makes me think that that's probably the number they're, they're going to land at. 
because uh, they have 363, 363, 320, and 150 there. But I can't be sure. I'm going to email my rep, though, and if she gets back to me before I have a chance to finish up this video, then I will uh, I will let you know. But I'm going to swatch these off camera because I think that would be quite boring to watch. And um, then I'll come back and, and show you what I've done. I might do a little coloring with them, too, just to... Um, to kind of see how they they work. Generally, your alcohol markers all work the same. I'm pr I am a little familiar with this style because I've tried this style from another brand, uh, but we will see how these go because every marker is a little different. Every oh, who says they um they oh you know what? I think there is uh there is foam at the bottom of these too, so that's kind of nice. You can see it's bouncing in there. Oh, they really want to protect these markers in transit. So that's kind of nice that they go the extra way. There's a bit of packaging waste, but it keeps your it keeps your your packaging from getting destroyed. And I suppose you could take the lids off and like stack them and have them for, you know, so you could see what you're working on while you're working. Actually, look at that. You can actually set them like that. And that's kind of handy. Let's see. I'm sure there's a reason this this these lids go like that. They probably go like that, so you can so you can set them like that. That makes sense, or like that. I think like that makes more sense, though. Can you pull these out without it falling over? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I don't know. Now they kind of want to fall down. I would. I think there's probably a way to use this lid as a pr to prop it up, and I just don't know. Maybe like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that. But uh, I'll play with these a bit, and then I will let you know where that came from. This is a tight fit, and then I will get back to you. One thing I want to mention before I forget is uh, an improvement I think that these this company could make would be to make the swatches fit on the top of the marker, so you don't have to bend them to put them in the box because. I like to keep, if I'm going to keep a set together, I want to keep my swatches with my markers. And I just see that as a missed opportunity because, you know, if you could just like maybe make the swatches a little bit smaller or just extend, extend the swatch out a little bit and get rid of that bottom row so that you can actually fit it in here right on top because you it's divided. You can't slide it down into the box. That would make so much more sense to me than to have it like this and have to bend it to be able to close it. So, and it's same thing with the with the smaller ones. So that would be my first recommendation. I, I kind of wish companies would contact me during the development stage and I'd be like, listen, this is what you gotta do. You gotta make this a little bit smaller so it fits in the lid and then people don't have to bend it. But, um, and also I noticed as I was swatching these out, many of the marker caps were not a very good match, but that I guess is to be expected with markers, but sometimes you get closer than others. I, I found these to be a little bit more off than others. Um, but I'm going to compare these colors with the other Uhuhu colors by number. I do know there's something like 13 new colors in this set that aren't in either the classic or the brush markers from Uhuhu. Um, and I'll put that information in the video description because they did send me that. And also, um, they sent me the prices on these. I believe the bigger sets will be $39.99 and the smaller ones, I think $19.99. Um, but I'll have that in the video description along with a 10% off coupon that's going to be good for a month. So um, they did get right back to me that day. I just wanted to mention that as well. But uh, there's where we are now. All right. So um, I did hear back from Ohuhu again. Um, there's going to be a 10% off coupon code for these new markers on Amazon and a 20% off coupon code for the markers on the Ohuhu website. I'll put all the information in the video description. Honestly, I wish I had a little more time with these markers because um, I just received them a couple days ago and they go live on the 12th, so I didn't have enough time to do too much with them and I've been under the weather. But I did some blending tests here. This is the Ohuhu Hardbound Sketchbook. I found the blends to be pretty easy to do, pretty... Um, um, pretty comparable to other markers. The inks did seem to be nice. I did a, just a couple little petals here on this Altenew marker paper and it was didn't blend as well as on the um, on the uh, Ohuhu marker paper but um, like I said I didn't have that much time to work on these. These are very similar to the um, the markers I reviewed last year by Artify, they're new enhanced markers, so I'll just show you these side by side really quickly. And if you want more information about this particular 
barrel type, this particular style of marker, then um, you can check out that review. But actually, let me can let me um, let me compare the three different Uhuhu markers that are current. Now I know they have a bunch of other different uh, markers. They have like a slimline alcohol marker, which I haven't tried. They have a few water-based markers. They kind of they they test the waters a lot. But in the new brochure, I've noticed they are just listing. The Honolulu A and B, which this is a Honolulu, the standard Honolulu with the brush and chisel tip, and then they have the Honolulu B with the brush and fine point. Then they have the Oahu, which is their bullet and chisel tip, and now they have this new one, which is the um, bullet and enhanced chisel tip. So let's take a look at these three, and then I'm going to compare uh, this one to the Artify that I reviewed last year, because I do think they're just about the same marker. Now I did notice that the um, the color numbers and names matched the uh, Oahu Classic type, type with the bullet and the chisel nib. So their markers and color numbers match perfectly. The brush markers, some colors will match, some won't. The numbers do not match with the brush markers. So some of the, the names will, but you know, that's just how, how it is for some reason. I don't know why they don't have them all match. I think that would be a no-brainer, but maybe just it's just too confusing with having like so many markers to deal with. So this is our um, Oahu. Now they changed their marker numbering system with these, um, I think with the 200 sets and above. Uh, maybe they're all all uh, to this new numbering system, but these used to be on the Shinhan Touch marker system numbering system. Um, so that's the Oahu. This is the Honolulu. Again, we have that same chisel nib, but this time we have a double-ended brush nib, so you can pull it out and reinsert it if you need to. And they now have uh, refills for the brush nibs. This wants to roll away on me. Uh, the nice thing about the Classic and the... Um, I'll just do it like that. And the brand new ones is that they're oval, so they don't roll. So these are all peacock greens. So you can kind of see the difference here in the uh, in the body. First of all, this new one has a tapered body. It's thicker on the chisel end, so it's really easy to tell what end is what. The chisel end has a cap with a color chip on it. The um, bullet end just has a plain ventilated cap. And I would say that the fine point might be a little bit finer than the other fine points. So let's just do a little swatch here. So the blade on the chisel edge can get a nice fine line it can go thin to thick kind of like a brush marker and then the fine tip i'm trying to tell if it feels firmer or softer let's see these are all pretty new markers so I can't tell if it really feels firmer. I gotta pick up that one again and see. I feel like this might feel a little bit more responsive. It is tapered a little bit skinnier. I don't know if this will even show up on camera, but it is a little bit skinnier uh, width-wise at the tip. It tapers out more and it is a little bit longer, so it does feel like it's a little bit kind of a more nimble bladed marker. I gotta try the. Let me try this one again. Yeah, these tips feel a little bit softer, which I prefer to a harder nib. Like when I when I compare like the um, the Ohuhu um, brush mark or the Ohuhu classics and the like Artex uh, Alp with heads of bullet tips, I find their their nibs their bullet tips to be a little bit crisper and firmer, and the Ohuhu to be a little softer, and then these are a little bit softer still. Um, so if you kind of think of like the bullet tip that you get on a like a big market, similar to that, but this is skinnier, but it's a similar softness. And then we've got the Ohuhu Honolulu. Actually, I would say their their brush nib, their uh, chisel nib feels pretty pretty soft. All right. So there's an example of their three current Ohuhu Artist Markers. Um, the 
this this middle one being round it's nice if you have your caps on because that keeps it from rolling around um, but the chisel nibs on the original two Ohuhu markers are identical so I'm just going to cap those up the chisel nib on the new one is longer thinner more nimble a little bit easier if you want to just use one end and get some detail and get some wider strokes it's not going to blend quite as easily as a brush nib because it's not flexible but um, if you just want one nib and not have to switch between ends, I find that that does work pretty well. That said, I still think a brush nib is easier, and I believe these are a little bit more expensive per marker, actually, or the same, either a little more expensive or the same price as their brush nib. So, um, you know, kind of keep that in mind. I think the brush nib markers run around 70 cents per marker, regular price, I'm not, uh, not factoring in the sale they have on these now. But um, I think they're very comparable. Personally, I'd go with a brush nib, but um, you know, you do what you want to do. We'll compare this with the, uh, the Artify ones as well. So I did get some, uh, I did get some talk talking points from Ohuhu, but I also got some, con con I guess, conflicting information. Um, and again, I apologize for being a little scattered. I did not have a lot of time and they wanted this to go out on the 12th and I agreed to it I didn't realize the markers would come so close to that deadline so I just wanted to be completely uh, to be completely transparent they sent me these to review I thought I'd have a little more time than I did it's you know I should have asked I should have clarified um, but anyways one thing I did want to try though I wanted to see and I'm gonna try test this out on one of the colors colorless blenders I want to see if the brush tips will fit in the chisel tip end just in case because um, I know that somebody's going to ask me that, so I'm just going to pull that out. Oh, it pulled out really easily. I should have used the tweezers. comes right with them, but it's a clear one, so I'm not too worried about getting my fingers dirty. Now, what I'll do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to, um, cap this up, and I'm going to set this on top of my brochure here, so we'll get, we'll touch back at the end of the video, and we'll see if that ink flowed through and if it really d is compatible. Um... And I'll just leave that there. I can let that dry out and reuse it again anyway if I want to, so that's not a big deal. I'm just going to set those aside. Okay, so let's compare this to those Artify ones that I that I reviewed about a year ago. Now, I believe Artify has a max collection of 120 in the Enhanced series, and Uhuhu has a collection of 150 in their um, in their their series. Both the companies have a sticker on the side of the marker that tells the color because that way you don't, like with a regular marker, I'm sorry if my voice sounds horrible, um, like if I set this, and I had a couple things out and I have this cap off somewhere, I might not necessarily know what the marker is because there's no other other cap. So with the Artify ones, they give you the a sticker on the side with a num name and number, and they also give you swatch stickers to color and stick on your marker, which I really liked. I did not see that packed into any of these Ohuhu markers, but I do love that, and I, I'm glad to see more markers doing that, more companies doing that. I did that with my markers a few years ago, and I loved it. So I don't know if they got the idea from me. I like to think they did, but probably not. I don't know. And then on the Ohuhu marker, you've got a, a clear sticker on the side that has the name, Peacock Green, and the number, and of course there's nothing on the little end, and on the big end we have got the color chip. So let's just compare these side by side. This is the Ohuhu one down below. I'm just going to turn it so we can see. Build-wise, I think they're they're identical bodies. So, um, Ohuhu does their inks in-house. That's what they say. Um, so, I do think there'll be refills for everything. Now, the key talking points I have for the my rep said that these don't have replaceable nibs and they don't have um, refills. They're not refillable. But on the talking points they sent me, it said that. Um, they have replaceable tips and are refillable. So I think that might be kind of like that's available in this line of markers, but they're just not stocking them yet, maybe. And I did ask them how uh, how big of a range are they going to go with this? Are they going to do 300? And like, if we look at the, um, if we look at, I'll grab another brochure because, oh my gosh, I got brochures coming out of my ears here. Um, 363 colors in the Honolulu, 320 in the Oahu, 150 in the Kala. So they won't know if they're gonna in here, if they're going to, going to expand this line until they see what the sales are doing. That's pretty basic. Um, a lot of companies don't decide if they're gonna come out with open stock refills, replaceable nibs, or expand the line until they see how the first iteration sells. Um, so let's just compare the Artify chisel tip. All right, with the Ohuhu chisel tip, and I haven't used these tons, 
So I think it's a pretty fair comparison. They feel pretty darn identical. Now we'll do the Artify uh, Fine. And we'll do the Ohuhu Fine. I mean the colors aren't exactly the same, but I think they're I think they're pretty identical, except the color the color range would be a little bit different. So I'd say if you have the um, if you have the Artify ones and you like them and you want to expand the color range, and you like Ohuhu's color range, then that might be a good option, especially because the Ohuhu's have like a skin tone set and a landscape set and an illustration set. So you might be able to find a set that's going to fill in what you have really well. I'm just going to make sure I have the right peacock green, peacock green. Make sure I have the right caps on there. So I would say the the body's identical to the Artifies, and then the oh ink, the uh, ink is using the Ohuhu inks that they have in their um, the their Oahu line. So there are 13 new colors in this in this line. Um, these are what they are. This uh, lapis lazuli is kind of like a dull ultramarine. We've got a couple new grays. I don't like the way Uhuhu numbers names their grays. Um, they're very, they're they'll use BG and it will be cool gray something. And it's just like like this right here. This I teach a mark, marker class. It's available in my teacher teachable school. I'll link it down below if you're interested. But like this is cool gray 82. You know, generally it's so much easier for somebody to learn markers if it's like. And, and the numbers, the code is BG082. If it was cool gray, I think the number code should be CG, and then it should be a scale of like maybe 0.5 or even 00, 0 up to 9. So that way it's really logical. So if somebody's a beginner, they maybe the caps aren't a perfect match. These caps are not a perfect match. A lot of them are quite off. Um, if it's a gradiated scale and the numbers make sense and the naming makes sense, it's going to be so much easier for a beginner to learn. And cool gray, neutral gray, warm gray, green gray, gray, having a range of those just is is kind of a no-brainer. It's kind of standard. Um, everybody uses those, those, well, not everybody, unfortunately, but most marker companies use that scale and that range, and I just don't know why they don't, because... I think it, I think it's a situation where they probably added to their range and added to their range and added to their range and then they just couldn't fit the markers, they couldn't fit the um, the colors in in a logical way. But it's just frustrating for a um, uh, for a student, I think. Um, so I did want to clarify in the prices the basic set of twenty four, which is this right here. And by the way, I taped my swatch. I don't know if I'm gonna like this either. I taped the swatches to the box because I didn't like them getting bent inside the case. I like the case, but I think what I would do is actually take all the markers out and group them with our color families. So I'm probably not, the only, the only reason I would keep the swatch on the case is in case I wanted to put it back the normal way. I'm, I've left these the way they came, but um, I think it would be much better to sort them out, have all your, like your skin tones together here, your earth tones or skin tones together, and then have your blues together, reds together, yellows together. It just makes a lot more sense. And I would put sw swatches, swatch stickers on the markers because the caps are not reliable. The caps look, um, they seem to look, I'm thinking they look lighter than they are. Let me see. Let's try this one. 367. I don't know how that's going to look, but 367. That one actually isn't too bad. This cap is lighter than how it looks. I think that's what it was. I think they looked, a, they were lighter, or their caps were lighter than how the ink came out. But, um, but anyway, so this set of basic is, is 20 bucks. Let's just, let's just say, let's just round it up. 20 bucks. Um, the skin tone set is 22. It's uh, 24 colors, $22. Good range, I thought. This is what it looks like anyways. Might as well see the real swatch because it's hard to tell. Uh, I'll show you the basic swatch. Just so it's kind of you know your average, your average basic colors. We have the illustration set, which is a little bit more interesting of a palette. But you, well, you do have some primaries. You got some primary blues. You got some primary yellows. You got a couple reds there. But I feel like you're really lacking a lot of blending tones in this set. It's definitely more for I don't know. You got greens you can blend, but you don't really have a good red blend. Um, and then you get yellow grays. It's a weird, it's a little bit of a strange combination, but I think it's, no, this one's a landscape tones. This is landscape tones, so maybe it's not as weird. You're probably not going to need red that much in landscape tones. Uh, this is the illustration set here. Both of these 60 set of, 
uh, markers are $39.99 or $40. So, um, yeah, the illustration tones, not a lot of blues. It's just, you know, I mean, you got some skin tones. You got, I think this is, you know, you could do a fashion illustration, I guess, because you got a few skin tones. You got a few fashionable tones. You're probably Pantone in colors or something. They're probably picked from a certain selection of colors. But um, you will have, you buy all four sets, you will have 18 duplicates, plus you'll have four colorless blenders. So they don't count the colorless blenders in their set. So, you know, 25, your 24 marker set actually has 25 markers because it contains a colorless blender. And speaking of, let's check back with our brush tip. And yes, that is nice and juicy. Marvelous. I'm actually, I'm thinking about keeping that brush tip right in there actually. <laughs> but and there you can see it does the brush, the, the blender does lift. Um, so yeah, they, the, the brush tips will fit very nicely in the chisel end there. So other as far as other nibs, I'm not sure the, um, let's pull that out, let's just take a look actually. Why don't we take a look so then we can see what these nibs look like and how they will compare with other nibs that we may have in our stash. Ah! Bullets. The bullets are hard to come out. They generally don't wear down. You generally don't have to replace them, but I do have I do have some refills we can compare and see what might match. So there's our chisel and bullet. Now the chisels aren't going to be exactly the same, but I need to organize my nibs. They're a mess. Let's see. This is a Copic Standard Fine. Um, I would say the Copic Standard Fine's a little bit too skinny. Well, it would probably just wiggle around in there. It's probably not what you want. We can, I can try one. We'll try one. We'll see if it's, if it really wiggles in there. I feel like I'm doing this on the fly. I actually thought about live streaming. Uh, that's too loose. The Copic, the Copic Standard Fine is too loose for that. Let's try an Arteza. I think I have an Arteza Fine nib here somewhere in our teaser brush oh you know what I might not I've got Copic fines standard fines well gee you know what I don't have an Arteza fine nib that's too bad because I could have I could have checked that um well gee sorry guys I can't you know what hold the phone I can just grab an Arteza marker right here because they sell replacement nibs for the Everblend markers. So let's pull this out and just see if it's the same size or not. That looks bigger to me, but maybe not. Uh, you know what? I don't, I think it's maybe just a touch longer, but I think it would work. I think it would work. I don't really want to stick that in there though, because uh, I don't want to stain my marker. I could try, like, let me find a hot pink color. That's what I'll do. Let's see. Vivid reddish purple. We'll try that. Vivid, vivid reddish purple. Anything for science, right? Let's see. Let's see if that fits. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the Arteza, the Arteza um, bullet nibs will fit. They're, you know what? They actually are. They're, well, they'll fit fine. They do feel a little bit loose, but no, I think they're fine in there. That was your teaser, right? Oh, so confused. I think it is, though. Yeah. Yep. Well, either way. Either way, there's a nib in there now. So that's good to know. You can use the Arteza uh, fine nibs if you needed to. They're they're very affordable. I like the I like the uh, the brush nibs a lot. They're the Japanese style, and uh, I don't think I have I don't have a um, this is one of the cla the uh, the Ahuhu chisel nibs. I think. I think those would fit, but let's just put that, put one in here and see. Put 
We're brushing it about again. Oops, oh no, now I've got pop pink on there. I did not mean to do that. Yeah, that fits in there. Let's just see if the stem is the same size. The stem is the same length. Yep. So you can use any of the, the like the Arteza or the Ohuhu chisel nibs. And I don't know if Ohuhu does a chisel nib, but it would fit. And um, you could use, what did I just put back in there? Oh, I put the original. Um, and you could use the Arteza bullet nibs in there. So yeah, you could refill with those, no problem. You just wouldn't have quite the same shape of your chisel nib, but that's not really that big of a deal. Ah, ah well, I'm a mess. But anyways, now you know all there is to know about these markers. I think, I know I've lost a cap, but there it is. Um, what do I think about these? Do I recommend them? Well, if, if you like this type of nib, I think it's fine. Um, I'm gonna look at the other topic, talking points here. I'm so sorry I'm not more practiced at this because um, I have it. I've you know keep in mind I've had these for like four days. Uh, the let's see um, unique slim broad tip. Oh, whose new slim broad tip has a wider blade and a thinner cutting edge, ideal for coloring large spaces and creating sharp and angled lines. The fine tip is best for fine lines and details. High level of versatility. Four different color sets, which we've gone over. The different sets that combined would give you 150 unique colors with 18 duplicates if you bought all four sets. Um, let's see, fast drying ink, you know how alcohol ink works. Um, replaceable tips and refillable, we just tested that. Uh, to refill, I would pull out the chisel nib and drop the ink in that end personally. Ergonomically designed, I will say yes, they are comfortable to hold, although I didn't do any finished artwork with these because I just didn't have the time. Um, more affordable than other professional grade markers, but they perform just as well. Now, more affordable. Uh, these are more expensive than the classic Uhuhus that use the same color ink and the same numbers. I'm just feeling weight-wise. Weight-wise, the Oahus feel a little heavier, so I wonder if they might have more ink in them or if it's just the, the barrels weigh more. Um, I really don't find that much difference between them, personally, to to pay extra for this style, unless it's just, they're both oval, unless this is just so much more comfortable for you to hold or just having that fatter end with the identification on it, knowing that's the chisel is important to you. Personally, if I wanted a chisel and a bullet nib marker and I wanted to get the best value, I would go with the classic ones. Plus I love that there's a bigger variety of colors and I can get them all in one set and pay a lower price per marker. So that would be my preference would just be to stick with the classics, but um, if you want to set this easier to learn with, I think a brush marker is much easier to learn with and um, out of the all the Ohuhu markers, I still go for the brush marker, I think. I like their classics too, but these, um, for me, that, that, that longer, thinner blade of the chisel marker is not that much of a selling point for me to pay extra for, but you know, I, you may be different. For me, I would go with the brush tip. It's just easier. It's faster. It's um, easier to learn. Less less of a learning curve. And that's, you know, that's my opinion. I think these are nice markers. They're matte rather than glossy. The other two are glossy. You might just prefer that, prefer that aesthetic. So it is also easier to pull the caps off when they're matte versus glossy. But I don't find these difficult to pull the caps off either. So I don't think it would be that big of a boon if you had any um, strength issues not to go with one of these other markers. You know, they're all pretty easy to remove the caps. <clears throat> so I don't know. I mean, I think it's interesting. I think it's unique. Um, I mean, they're the same as the Artify, so really not that unique, but hey, I mean, if you like the style of marker, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think you're gonna go wrong per se. I just think that the uh, the Oahu line from Oahu is a better, just a more um, affordable and larger range of colors. So that's that's my take on it. Anyway, you can let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you absolutely love these and you want to add a, collect, a set to your collection, I'll put links. There are affiliate links um, that, that will have coupon codes so that you can save a little bit more on the set if you want to try. What I'd probably recommend if you're curious about these, I'd probably recommend going with the skin tone set because it's actually a really nice skin tone set. <coughs> oh, I apologize, guys. Um, 
and the skin tone, like these lighter colors, these lighter blending out colors, those are colors you're going to use up a lot anyway, When even if you're blending deeper skin tones, because you're still going to go in with those lighter tones to lighten them up. Pastel shades tend to dry out faster, so um, I think that, you know, you'd end up using these anyway. So that would probably be my recommendation if you're on the fence, you're not sure what you think about these. I wish they did a smaller swatch card so it would fit in the top of the box, because honestly, after I did this, I'm like, I can't see this while I'm using the markers because I got the case open. It's just not, yeah. I Sometimes I wish companies would con would contact me before they actually went to market with anything and I could be like, listen, but to make the swatch a little bit smaller, trust me, that's just the little things like that. Uh, but overall, I Ohuhu oh, who always comes up with really nice products. They're, they're affordable, they're a good value. There's nothing wrong with these. They just wouldn't be my first pick out of the Ohuhu markers, but um, I want to thank you so much for watching. I know my voice probably sounded a little bit rough around the edges. I know I'm a little bit rough around the edges tonight. It's been uh, it's been a rough few days uh, with a couple of deadlines, and uh, I've been running a little ragged, um, but I do appreciate you watching, and at least now you know about them. If you know you're somebody that wants to have the latest and greatest thing, you can see what you're getting and decide if that's something you really want. I know it's exciting to find new things and, and want to get them and you'll have a coupon code if that's what you want to do. But uh, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy my reviews. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.